بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters, viewers and spectators Today I want to talk about the responsibility of Muslims as rule in the country As the current scenario, the country is not that promising uh, It is actually considerably concerning and so that we have to know that our know our responsibilities and we have to know the fundamental rights uh, of religion that the constitution has given to us as the uh, current decision made by the Karnataka government of banning hijab from schools is quite harsh and that caused few protests erupted in Karnataka and then the recent incident took place in one of the districts of Karnataka where a Muslim girl went to university and was gathered by a mob was shouting those so-called slogans and then she she shouted back she hit back and that was quite a brave step taken by a brave girl and uh, she set an example actually example of bravery so we must appreciate it but we all muslims have responsibility because we all the we all are the ambassador for islam we all are responsible for islam the allah says in quran majid reminding us the responsibility uh, responsibility that allah has given to every single muslim where he says a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله. You are the best nation produced to all humankind. You enjoin what is right, you forbid what is wrong, you believe in Allah. So that is a common responsibility for all Muslims across the country, without any exception. There is there, there is responsibility for those who runs organization who run different universities or different organizations of movements the responsibility of them is quite high but we all Muslims have also responsibility and we can also play a big role a huge role in the welfare of the country in the welfare of the society the role that we can play is Allah says in Quran Majid أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن أحسن قولا ممن دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين. He says who is better in speech than the one who invites people to Allah and who does good deeds and who says that I am one of the submitters, I am one of the Muslims and he says not just with the tongue but with the heart, with his deeds. With his, with his practices of Islam because he has to know the mandatory mandatories of Islam, the compulsories of Islam and as the current situation is evolving so the Muslims have kind of more responsibility to know the better of Islam to know the commandments of Islam, the commandments of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and as I see the debates, different debates on different media channels the most frequent question that is being asked and that is being befalls to debaters who represent Muslim community, who represent Islam, is the one that they usually ask, what is more preferable among Muslims? Quran, the law, the Sharia, or the constitution? We have to respond and we have to counter them back because there is no comparison between Quran and constitution. Because there is no contradiction. If there is no contradiction, then there is no comparison. Because constitution has given us the right to practice on our religion. Constitution has given us the right to propagate our thought, our virtues. And constitution has given us the right to be a practicing Muslim. And Quran and uh, Sharia has taught us to love and to respect the country and respect the constitution. So there is no contradiction, there is no comparison. So we have to counter them back and we have to ask them back. And we have to be 
a well prepared debater when we get, go to participate in a debate on a media channel. So that is one thing that we have to put in our mind. And the other thing is, we have to know the Constitution also. We have to know the fundamental rights that is given by the Constitution to all minorities, including Muslims. Constitution has given us a right to practice on our religion, as I said, with a few exceptions, as Karnataka government also you know, uh, reminds uh, Muslims that uh, in uh, schools there is a public order, there is a uniform that you should follow. But we can set the tone with, as I uh, recited the ayah, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهُ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ If you represent ourselves in full Islamic and Quranic attire, I won't say uh, cultural attire, I would say an Islamic attire. We have to dress up like Islam taught us. We have to talk like Islam uh, taught us. We have to eat like Islam taught us. We have to practice because these are our personal laws. Nobody can interfere because constitution has given us the right. Dear brothers and sisters, as far as veiling is concerned or hijab is concerned, so that is a vast topic that I don't want to go in detail, but basically I can say this is a religious dress code in Islam for modesty and there is a dress code for men also as well as for women. And uh, it is explicitly taught that men cannot wear uh, a see-through dress, a see-through attire, and a shorter attire than the, uh, you know, gaze to navel. So that, that there is a dress code for men also, and there is a dress code for women also. And if you go through other scriptures, other religious scriptures, like Christianity, Hinduism, Judaism, and others, then we can find out there are more strict and harder rules and restrictions about, uh, you know, about the modesty and about the hijab or about parda and but they don't follow them that is another thing but we decided to live in this country and we decided to live here with our dignity and with our identity we decided to live here with our identity we cannot give up and we cannot get rid of it so dear brothers and sisters there are few things that we have to focus on that we have to concentrate the first thing is we have to open our own institutions we have to make our own colleges universities and institutions throughout the country where we can send our children our kids and the other thing is we have to be a true exemplar we have to be a true Muslim that can represent Islam with his deeds with his practices when he walks, when he talks, when he says something, people can smell his true thoughts and his true virtues. So, and that's why I recited the ayah, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن أحسن قولا ممن دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين who is better in speech than the one who invites people to Allah and who himself does good deeds and says I am one of the true submitters, I am one of the true Muslims. So the one who says also the word of Allah and who adopts also the word of Allah, who practices also on the commandments of Allah is the true Muslim and he is the true ambassador for Islam, uh, true responsible of Islam. And along with that, for hijab I would say one more thing, uh, that we, there are too many differences also about uh, hijab, but we have to keep our differences aside to prove hijab compulsory and mandatory in higher courts so that our Muslim uh, sisters can get the permission in schools, colleges and universities to cover themselves to wear hijab. So these, these are a few things I want to talk about and there I, I put them and hope you have enjoyed it, you have took some benefits, may Allah give me also benefits, may Allah protect all of us and may Allah give us the chance and opportunity to practice on, on Islam as a whole.
Allah